Good afternoon, welcome to another episode of Logan's Devotions. It's great to be together. Wonderful to open up God's Word for another day and see what he has to say. We're turning through to Luke chapter 18, but before we read our passage, as always, let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We give thanks to you that we can turn to it, and we pray that you would cause it to bear much fruit in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Luke 18, picking up at verse 31. And taking the twelve, he said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be delivered over to the Gentiles, and will be mocked, and shamefully treated, and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him, and on the third day he will rise. But they understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. Well, we've been talking a little bit about the kingdom of God, and specifically about who gets to be a part of it. And we've seen so far that there's this persistent widow who gets what she needs. We've seen that there's a tax collector who gets welcomed. We've seen children get welcomed. And we've seen that the rich young ruler doesn't get welcomed, but the disciples do. And that theme is going to continue on as we progress into chapter 19. But what's quite interesting is that in the middle of this section to do with the kingdom of God and people entering it, we find this series of verses from verse 31 to 34. Now, there's a couple of places in Luke where we get very similar words like this occurring. And it's almost like a section divider for Luke that he uses to break sections up. But within those sections... At that transition point, we often also find little sections themselves, which is what we have here. And I actually think that Luke has very intentionally, I mean, of course he has, we're told he's bringing together a well-ordered account for Theophilus, in verse 31 to 34 is highlighting something really, really important. And it has to do with what goes before and after. And it's, it's really the fundamental question of how does one get to be a part of the kingdom of God? Let, let me ask it to you a little bit differently. How does the tax collector get to be part of the kingdom in the parable? Is it because he's sorrowful enough? You know, because the Pharisee He's filled with self-righteousness, but the tax collector, you know, he's got a sorrowful heart. He feels bad about his sin. He's repentant. So is the tax collector justified because he was more sorrowful, because he did enough in his sorrow? Or the widow, does she receive justice because she pleads enough? Or... The disciples, do they enter the kingdom because they were poor? And did the rich young ruler miss out because he wasn't willing to give everything up? And if you look into the next sections, does the blind beggar beg enough to receive mercy? Does Zacchaeus do enough to receive mercy? And if my pages don't stick together, do the parable of uh, the men in the parable of the 10 miners do enough that they get rewarded? And the answer, of course, to all of that is no. And and the reason is because of verse 31 to 34. You see, Jesus has been doing all this teaching. He's been interacting with all these different people. And now the disciples have just finished saying that they've abandoned everything to follow Jesus. So what are they going to get? And then Jesus, in effect, pulls the twelve aside and tells them how it is that they get to enter the kingdom of God. How it is that people get saved. How it is that they get to receive a hundredfold and eternal life. Remember the last words were... 
you will receive many times more in this time and in the age to come eternal life. Is it because they gave their stuff away? Is it because they gave up homes and wives and brothers and parents or children for the sake of the kingdom? No. It's because of the work of Christ. And so Jesus pulls the twelve aside. And he says to them, everything written about the Son of Man will be accomplished. Now the disciples would have been tempted to think, here comes King David. He's going to receive his kingdom. He's going to get rid of the opponents, the Romans. He's going to exhort his theology and his power. And he's going to take everything over. But Jesus says to them, he will be delivered over to the Gentiles and be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon, flogged, killed, and on the third day he will rise. So what's Jesus telling us? What Jesus is telling us is that the way the tax collector gets in is by the suffering of Jesus Christ. The way that the disciples receive many times more and eternal life is because Jesus Christ will lay down his life to take it up again. As the good shepherd, he will suffer horribly in order to win his sheep to himself. What we see is the story of a suffering saviour who would not count himself as worthy, his life as worthy of keeping, but instead would lay it down at the foot of the cross Bearing our sin and our shame. For this reason, he came to give his life as a ransom for many. And so for you and I, as we read the Gospel of Luke and as we read chapter 18, and as we hear these ominous words, though we've seen them fulfilled, the question is, are we coming to Christ through the work of Christ alone? Or are we subtly tempted to think that it's through my sorrow like the tax collector? Or through my persistence like the widow? Or through my giving things up like the disciples? Or through my virtue as being a child like the little children? Or will we simply come to Christ? And take his death and die in him, to be risen in him, and to receive life in him. May God grant us to do so. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the glorious cross work of Christ. Help us to lay hold of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.